Hi, this is Pat with Code Academy. I'm a web developer based in Washington, DC. If you're new to tech or you don't know how software gets built, this video is for you. I'm gonna give you a high level overview of the development cycle and hopefully clear some things up for you. You're in the right place if you wanna know how product managers and project managers work with designers and developers to turn ideas into great working software. By the end, you should have a better idea of how everyone works and what their tools, techniques, and processes are. Let's get cracking. Who's with me? Sometimes you just need a basic understanding of the development cycle and how ideas start to when they get deployed. And if that sounds like you, you've come to the right place. It can be confusing to separate where one team member's focus starts, stops, and where the overlap is. Where is the product manager in all this? When do they hand off to the project manager? How do designers and developers work with each other to bring their ideas to life? If you'd like a more detailed video about what a product manager is and what a project manager does, check out the video description below where we'll link to some of those videos. But for our purposes here, we're talking about a high level overview of the entire development cycle. So for this video, we're gonna cover three main themes. The first being from idea to deploy the development cycle. We'll do an overview of the development cycle and how product managers and project managers get to work. Next, we'll talk about developers and specifically how do developers work with designers? How do they work with project managers and product managers? We'll wrap up by talking about the tools and processes associated with agile development cycles, specifically sprint planning, backlog grooming, and retros. We'll cover Kanban boards, epics, stories, and tickets, and finish off with Git, GitHub, pull requests, and quality assurance. There's a lot to cover, so I hope you're hungry. For our video, imagine we have a fictitious company we'll call Kitten Academy, where new cat owners can find answers to how to raise healthy and happy kittens. We'll use my cat, Albus, as our mascot. Next, it's been decided that the priority is to create a feature on our website that allows users to schedule video conferencing between new cat owners and real veterinarians to answer all their questions they might have. We need to go into the roles of how this feature is going to be broken down, and let's start with product managers. Think of the product manager as the captain of the ship. They're in charge of the direction the ship is headed. Therefore, a product manager has three main priorities, a high level focus, stakeholder management, and overall product success. You see, depending on how complex a product is, product managers will need to break up the construction, maintenance, and oversight to their subordinates, usually project managers. But a product manager can't be everywhere all the time, so they're counting on project managers to facilitate a number of things that need to happen for a ship to both stay afloat and complete the voyage. For our Kitten Academy project, a product manager is in charge of overseeing the build-out of the video conferencing feature. To do that, they delegate to the project managers to break up the build-out into steps designers and developers can focus on. Now, for project managers, they have to work with the stakeholders above them to set their expectations. Maybe features taking longer to build after engineers discover problems in their build-out phase. Or maybe a feature has unexpected complexity that needs to be addressed before subsequent work is done in the design phase. If the product manager's focus needs to stay high level, they're counting on the project managers to tell them if they're on course or if something's come up that needs to be taken into account. The goal here is to not be blindsided, and project managers oversee the build-out so things stay on track and go as smoothly as possible. So here, the project manager's job is to push up the chain of command both good and complicating things to keep in mind when courses are being set and promises are being made. For our Kitten Academy video conferencing feature, this could be broken down like this. The design epic, user flows, and how should the feature work from screen to screen? Another design epic could be how should these screens look to a user? A development epic, how will users create accounts, sign up for appointment slots, and manage their appointment? And another development epic, how will users be reminded of their appointments? How will they join the video conference call? Next, we need to talk about how developers work with designers. Features often and should start with a design team. There's a joke that goes, weeks of programming can save you hours of planning. Get it? Designers typically start with a design thinking process and build out user flows to chart out how a user will interact with the application. While there's some visual design that happens in the initial phase, it starts with wireframes before getting too polished and branded. Then a developer will get these designs and ask questions about how a design is supposed to come to life. This might seem straightforward, but there may be time-consuming work for a simple feature, so designers and developers need to flesh out what needs to happen. This could mean pushing back up on the project manager that a feature might need to be added at a later date or broken into smaller steps. 
For example, the designer chose to have a list of available veterinarians from a dropdown for each time slot. Seems simple, right? Spoiler alert, it's not. To a developer, this means they have to maintain a database of who all the veterinarians are that signed up for this Kitten Academy service. And that means building a different application that allows veterinarians to sign up and set their availability. Again, this admin application is entirely separate from our Kitten Academy application, so we just doubled our build time for one nice-to-have feature. So the developer here needs to flag to the project manager that this functionality is out of scope given the amount of time they need to complete it. This doesn't mean it's not a good idea or that it won't be added later, just that if we want to launch Kitten Academy, the search feature might not be included or we'll find a creative way of tracking those appointments. It might not be the ideal solution, but we can build and iterate off it. Once a project manager understands the challenge, they have to see if they can get the developers the resources they need to accomplish it. If there aren't enough developers to work on this feature, they might have to approach the product manager for pushback. Being able to select from a dropdown a specific vet is a great idea, but it's going to take a long time. So the project manager relays this feedback to the product manager, who deems the ability to select a specific veterinarian non-critical to launch. So that's a high-level overview of the development cycle, but there's a lot of tools and processes that we haven't talked about. Let's start with the sprint cycle. There's a couple of parts of the planning phase. First, there's going to be road mapping, where we estimate how long things will take to build and what team members will be available to work on it and whether or not we should be working on it at all. Next, there's sprint planning, where we inform the team members what's going to happen in the next release cycle and what the priorities are going to be. The actual sprints themselves, the development cycle in action. This is where our team members roll up their sleeves and get to work. But there's also backlog grooming, and this is where we look at other issues that might have come up or are related to what the team is working on, but might not have been a priority. Maybe bugs were flagged or problem areas came up that need to be upgraded from sometime in the future to actually being worked on in the next sprint. Lastly, there are retrospectives or retros, where the team will come together and talk about what they should keep doing, what they should start doing, and what they should stop doing in the next sprint. One way teams keep track of who's doing what is with a Kanban board. A Kanban board is the most popular way of keeping track of priorities and issues during a sprint in an agile development cycle. Kanban boards visually depict work at various stages of the process using cards to represent work items and columns to represent each stage of the process. Two popular software companies you might have heard of that specialize in this are Trello and Jira, but plenty of teams just start out with good old post-it notes. All you really need for a Kanban board are columns and cards to keep track of what stage a ticket is at. Now, once we are using a Kanban board, we have some terms to run through that map out how the Kanban board works relative to the sprint. An epic. This is a high-level task. For our example, we want to allow users to sign up for Kitten Academy. Story. A sub-ticket of the epic. Examples would be build a user interface for users to sign up for Kitten Academy. Build a dashboard for users once they've signed up to manage their appointments. And allow users to store and update information about their kitten. A bug, an unforeseen issue that creates problems for our users. An example would be stop international users. Users with international addresses should not be able to sign up for Kitten Academy at this time because Kitten Academy is only available in the United States. These are general models and each team tends to have a different way of doing agile sprints and minting tickets to suit their particular models. Next, we need to talk about the code workflow, specifically Git, GitHub, pull requests, and quality assurance. What do you do when you have more than one person who all need to work on the same code base at the same time? The answer, Git. Version control management. Git is a tricky piece of command line software, but it also has a user interface software that developers use to track their changes to the application using this version control. Git is used locally to push up changes, pull down changes, and track changes to a remote repository. Although Git is used to manage your code, it's not actual code itself, even though it can feel like it at times. But where does the code go once it's left your machine? The answer, GitHub. GitHub is a popular remote code hosting solution used by many developers, both individual and teams. It's worth noting, though, that although Git and GitHub share the word Git, they are two separate pieces of technology. Confused yet? Let's try this. Git is for tracking changes on a developer's computer. GitHub is where those changes live so that others can download the same code and work off it. Popular alternatives to GitHub are Bitbucket, GitLab, and SourceForge. 
Once a developer is done working on their feature, they can submit a pull request for others to review it and make sure it won't conflict with any other code someone else is working on. This is also a chance for other developers to make sure the code written is done in the correct manner. Consistency is key, so most developers like to see the same naming and programming patterns as the rest of the code in the code base. Think of a pull request as a request to add your code that shows someone what changes you're proposing side by side with the current state of that code. Once a feature is complete and theoretically it could be absorbed into master, it's best practice and a general good idea to have it tested by someone else to make sure it works in a different environment than the one the developer used to create it. Most teams have special quality assurance copies of the real server the code will eventually live on to stress test the code so they can find any of the bugs and not the users. For example, we could have a server we call Kitten Staging, which is identical to our live website server so that we can deploy to it without fear of publishing a broken website. Then, either another developer or a dedicated quality assurance engineer will test all the number of ways a user might use the software, either correctly or incorrectly. And if it passes this stage, it goes live. This is Pat with Codecademy. Hopefully you have a much better idea of what the development cycle looks like for teams today. But did I answer all of your questions? Do you have any more? Like or subscribe or leave a comment below because I love responding to learners' comments and questions. Check out the video description for some helpful links that I had mentioned in this video. But if if you're ready to take your career to the next level, come on over to Codecademy and we'll help you get started.